So many of you might have noticed that when you test this now, having, having implemented the same code on each actor, you might have seen uh, that the character dropping away doesn't work anymore uh, for either characters. You know, they can punch each other as many times as they want, but nothing happens. Uh, the reason for that is because of this piece of code right here. So before, um, when the character was getting punched, it didn't have anything fixing it into position. Uh, so even if gravity was disabled, um, now you the character will retain its original position. Um, so we need to fix that. Uh, and the way that we're going to do that is we're going to create um, a attribute which is going to keep track of health. And when this value is, you know, um, zero, we will stop this piece of code running. And, uh, yeah, the, the standard thing of the character falling off the screen should, should happen. Um, so let's, let's look into this. Um, so the way that we would create a piece of health, uh, let's just uh, close all these... The way that we would we, we would create a, a health bar would be using an attribute. So you can see here we've got player one health. Um, now what we would want to do is, I would say within the scene, we'd want to define the initial value of each either player's health. So when the game begins, uh, we're going to set player one and player two health to uh, let me think, say ten. Um, just to excuse me for just one moment. What I'll do is I'll just check that what values I put in for the health before. Okay, to twenty-five. Okay, but it's technically just relative. You know, you, you, we we could set it up anyway. We really want really, but. Uh, in this circumstance, I'm going to set it to these values here. Um, so then what we're going to do next is we're going to create ourselves an if function within the boxer, the upper section of the boxer. Uh, now this is going to ask a, a very basic question, which is going to be if the health of our character is above zero, so if it's greater than zero, we're going to run this code, and then uh, what will happen otherwise is that it, the, the, if it isn't true, uh, this section of code won't continue to run, and therefore the character will fall off of the level. Um, so let's just give that a quick test and see if that works. Now, I've just realized something, uh, and you might have also spotted it too, but it, it most definitely will work because we haven't defined any reducing value of the punch. Uh, what I mean by that is when the player is punched by his opponent, his health, there's nothing that reduces his health within this chunk of code here. So what we would want to do is because it's a game attribute, we can access this value. Um, we can access this value, uh, the player one health. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna find its current value and we're gonna deduct one off of it. before it kills itself. Uh, and that way, each time we, we punch it, it will uh, reduce that health a little bit more. Uh, so yeah, uh, let me set it to a little bit higher number so we don't have to, I don't have to push 25 times. Um, now we haven't linked it to the health bar yet, uh, but we will do that in time. Uh, for now, we're just looking to see if there's a reaction. 
So it should take five punches and then the character should fall through the level. Okay. So one, oh, need to be in range. Two, three, four, five. Okay. So you might have also noticed that the character falls off at some quite a significant speed. Uh, the reason for that is because during, uh, before the time period of it, of it falling off the screen, uh, gravity had been taking effect on the character. Um, so theoretically, whoops, this chunk of code here, so it, so it would fall off at a normal velocity. Uh, we could actually create in here. The reason uh, you might want to consider doing that is because, as I said, for, for all the time that once it's been punched initially, uh, gravity is going to be kicking in, and it's going to be, even though it's fixed in the same position, it's going to be increasing in speed. Uh, so when you kill it, then it eventually falls, and it falls at a ridiculous speed. Um, so what we could do is, as I've done here, uh, I've just made it that when the health is zero, uh, along with no longer running this section of code here, it will disable the gravity. Uh, sorry, enable the gravity at the same time. So if I... I'll fix that for the other character in a moment, but this code should run now. Um, the only other thing that I'm going to suggest we do as part of this... Sorry, there's two, sorry, two more things. Uh, the first thing is we're going to create one more if function. Now this is going to be keeping track of whether the opponent has... Well, well whether player one has a certain key being held down. Uh, because if uh, it's down, isn't it? Yeah. So if down is held, that means that it's blocking, and therefore it shouldn't take off as much health as um, as if it, uh, um, in the case that it isn't. So I'm going to set this to take off half the amount of health that it would if it was hit at full force. Um, yeah. So that should be good. Um, other than that, the only thing that we could look into doing, um, it shouldn't take a, shouldn't take more than a single line of code, is when updating, as in when we've, it, within the health bar, every one second, so throughout the, the period of time, well, every billy millisecond kind of thing, uh, it's constantly going to be checking to see what the player's health is. Uh, so if I go to scale, as I mentioned in the summary video, what we're going to do is we've got the, the height of the health, and we're just going to set that to its standard width, sorry, its, its standard height. Uh, but we're going to take the value of player one health and use that as the scale for uh, the health and the length, the width of the health bar. Um, and we're just going to make that happen constantly. And you'll notice that I've got this set by default as the origin point to the top left hand corner. Uh, what this does is essentially means that your health bar will expand, start here and expand outwards rather than uh, have the origin point be the center and it expand out either way. That gives you kind of street fighter life kind of life bar from uh, reducing effect. I guess not street fighter, but just any kind of health bar uh, appearance. Anyway, we'll give that a quick test, see if this works. Okay. So the first thing you're probably going to notice is the health bar for the, this player, player one, is a lot less than player two. Uh, the reason for that 
is because we haven't multiplied the scale by anything. Um, so it is displaying at 25% of the scale that it would be usually. So what we could do to add to this piece of code here is a multiplier. So I'm going to multiply this by 10. So that means it will display over 250 pixels rather than by you know, 10. Uh, also, the character d kind of gave us a pretty boring rotation. You know, it's always, it, it didn't. It kind of looks quite boring when it it, it dies. Um, sounds kind of a bit sadistic, but uh, we're gonna apply a bit a, a twist to it to kind of turn it away from, make it kind of react and fall off when it when the character dies. Um, and not only that, we need to actually, within this chunk of code here, we need to actually tell the animation to react to being punched. So if we go to draw, switch animation, uh, we're going to go to only if it's hit uh, without being blocked. We're going to switch the animation to hit. And also, we need to switch the frame back to zero. Now, remember that this currently has been applied to self, which isn't what we want. We want it applied to the actor type that we're talking about. So what that will do is it will switch back to this animation here of his nose getting bopped. Uh, so if we give that a quick test. What we should have is, is the health being a lot longer and having the face actually react to being punched. There you go. And what we should also get is if we put it, put the hands up, it should retain that animation, but still reduce a little bit of health. Uh, so you can see that it still kind of doesn't really rotate at enough of a speed to kind of be visibly reacting to being punched uh, when it eventually dies. Uh, so maybe increase that number by 10. Um, but what I'm going to do for here is I'm going to wrap it up here. Uh, I'm going to apply all this code to the other player. I would suggest you do the same too. Uh, remember to make the appropriate changes, uh, you know, such as uh, player one health rather than player, uh, sorry, sorry, player two health rather than player one health. Um, and yeah, uh, check back in a little bit. And what we're going to do in the next video is we're going to get uh, the colors of the characters changing uh, and maybe a couple of other things as well.